many times I saw this and put this on my own pillow, which is every single night, I felt a hole in my heart. <laughs> Thank you for telling me, but there's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing you can do about it. So please just don't tell me at this point. I don't want to know. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It feels so good to be recording right now because I haven't recorded in a while. I haven't posted in a while. I thought it was only right to share this story. If you follow me on TikTok, on Instagram, you will see that I've been posting way more behind the scenes, sharing more about my business journey and also Curly relaunch journey because we will be relaunching very soon. So definitely stay tuned for that. And also check out my vlog series. We are two episodes in and episode three is coming very very soon so hit that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on the journey but in today's video i'm going to be sharing the story of how i created this gem so this is the reversible satin pillowcase and i'm bold enough to say i invented this product back in 2014 i created oh so curly but this was like our hero and is still our hero product our most popular product our best seller. In 2023 that we're in right now, I am currently inventing a upgrade of this pillowcase and some new products. So really excited to share that, but I just want to share the journey and the story of how I actually invented this pillowcase. Entrepreneurship wasn't really my plan. My plan wasn't to start a product business. At that time I was working at Tesco doing night shifts. Like I, I'm going to sound real dramatic right now, but there were times when I would be on the bus to work in tears because i just didn't want to go to work and i can't really complain because that was probably one of the best retail jobs i've had working night shifts in the warehouse because thinking about it now it kind of was preparing me for what was to come because i would have to like the orders and stuff would come in the new clothing and stuff and i would have to like unwrap it from the plastic that it comes in tag it hang it hang it in the right place in the back of the warehouse i would do that all night by myself i could listen to whatever music I wanted to when I did it and then fast forward a few years later I realized that I literally was doing the same thing for my own business so it's just funny how like God works and how your life works. So one night I want to say it was sometime in January it was nearly I think nearer the end of January the idea came to me I can't tell you that I was sitting trying to figure out what I was gonna do the idea literally came to me I remember I was lying at the time I was living with my mom and she had her one bed and I had to sleep on the sofa bed in the front room so I was on the sofa bed and I remember this idea just hit me because at the time I was actually doing my natural hair journey because at the end of uni I started to learn thanks to a um, Eritrean girl in my uni halls she had the most beautiful hair hair that I dreamed of having like it was moisturized it was long it was defined and I would just ask her and she actually told me about kinky curly and curls so I kind of like learned a lot from her and then I learned a lot from YouTube the American curlies that would share their curly hair routine so I was going through that whole journey and one night that I did came to me for UK curly girl and for oh so curly I didn't have the names yet but the idea of sharing my journey online as a blog as a youtube channel as an instagram page came to me and then also oh so curly in this same night guys like i have the journal to prove it i wrote it all down in this notepad all my ideas just came to me like i feel like that was a blessing from god because it just where did that come from it's the total opposite to the natural person i am i'm naturally quite quiet quite to myself introverted shy why would I want to be this big business owner that has to share everything online? That is not me. So I was kind of forced to step out in faith and start this business. Satin pillowcases had changed my life, guys. Like when I started to sleep on them, my hair, I no longer had bed head. I no longer woke up with frizzy hair, with knotted hair, with like hair up to here. And I had a boyfriend at the time. And when I used to stay at his, I realized that like sleeping on satin made my hair easier to manage like the next day and stuff because 
if you're watching this and you know staying at people's houses as a child and growing up was always kind of like a bit of anxiety around like how i'm gonna do my hair the next day what if this person doesn't have the products that i need what if this person doesn't know especially like this person's mum. like when you're really young will they know how to do my hair in the morning like that was also really a thought growing up so when i learned about satin pillowcases and bonnets and headscarves it just made my life so much easier because it maintained my definition and my hairstyle so i came up with the idea of this kind of cover for your pillow because i found that normal satin pillowcases were really loose at the end here and they would kind of slip and slide and they were just kind of plain i wanted to make something a bit fun and different and i thought it would be really cool as like a sleepover product you can just fold it up and it's really cute and colorful and just bring it out and fling it over whatever pillow you are with when you're on holiday when you're staying at someone's house and also of course on your own bed so when you're starting a product from scratch it's kind of like i don't know how to sew i'm not a seamstress i don't know where to get fabrics from i don't know anything i'm starting from scratch scratch the first thing that i thought to do was to make a kind of prototype and by doing that i stapled and cut out a satin scarf and tried to like make the design of the pillowcase that we have today for my pillow so that was kind of like my prototype and i took that to a seamstress now i didn't even know any seamstresses i don't know even know how to find one so i found myself on the gumtree website and i looked for seamstresses in my local area and managed to find one that specialized in satin because she actually put together wedding dresses so i thought okay cool she knows how to sew satin a pillowcase can't be that hard so we booked a meeting we met up in wimbledon in costa and she just told me about her history i showed her the pillowcase kind of hard for me to remember the ins and outs and i didn't record my journey at the time so yeah i kind of regret that but hey so i'm guessing maybe i bought fabric from somewhere and then maybe i gave her the fabric and she created it for me so the first one i know i didn't like the second one I probably didn't like either and then eventually we decided on a final prototype. So with that I decided okay I'm gonna start selling these. I need to set up a proper website because I was selling the beanies pretty much via social media and stuff. So in November I launched my business after doing a photo shoot. I had my first ever photo shoot. Took pictures of a few models on pillowcases and stuff launched the website i don't think i got a sale until christmas day i remember getting a sale on christmas day and just being so happy now with the pillowcase i had so many trials and tribulations so the first issue was fabric so of course i'm not an expert on fabric i don't know what i'm doing okay i don't know anything so i managed to find fabric stores in see my memory's so bad i feel like around kingston area but it was very expensive so after speaking with my seamstress she told me about a few other areas that have more affordable fabric in london and i went to visit them i felt the fabric really liked some of the satin and went with them for my satin pillowcases then later down the road when you know the pillowcase sales started to come in and it became our bestseller i wanted to outsource to alibaba and use china because i'd already use them for my beanies so i thought it's only right to kind of like ask them if they can make the pillowcases of course i didn't really know about like the laws and stuff with copyright we'll get into that later i think i sent them an nda i did know to do that so they created the pillowcases the order that came i remember one of the pillowcases it was the wrong color so they put two color colors together that was not my plan so that was just so disheartening and then some of the actual pillowcases were dying customers bed sheets their duvets their headboards their walls it was so bad and i was so upset i had terrible anxiety and i just felt so bad that this had happened to customers so if you're watching this and this has happened to you i again apologize it just was something that i never foreseed happening and couldn't control so that is one of the trials and tribulations so after that i had to of course go back to fabric that i found from here instead of from china because i was just so scared to even use them again so then eventually i found the perfect fabric which didn't dye anything until one day that fabric was sold out for about three to four months and my customers were begging for pillowcases my business was really growing it was doing so 
so well and then all of a sudden I had none of my best sellers in stock because the fabric just wasn't available it was held up and this is before 2020 I feel like this is about 2019 and I found myself on a plane visiting Italy where the manufacturers here in the UK told me the fabric was from me in my relentless days took a plane to italy and tried to find this fabric myself i visited every fabric store in um, milan did not find the exact same fabric i found similar one but it just wasn't the same so that was a fail then i found myself thanks to a like angel investor of mine who um, saw my products and saw my business and wanted to give me some money towards my business she told me about macedonia for fabric so i ended up in macedonia and found again not the exact same fabric but similar to hold me until my fabric was back in stock so that is just another trial for you guys and a lesson i would say is make sure you have multiple suppliers and manufacturers for your product and for the materials and stuff you need for your product so the reviews were amazing if you go on my website when it's back to relaunch 99 percent positive reviews organic reviews i've never paid for reviews i have an automatic app that sends out an email prompting people to leave a review for the pillowcase I don't ask anyone for anything directly and you will see the reviews are amazing for this product so everything was going really really well i actually decided to try and get into retailers and i managed to land a few local ones so thanks and shout out to nuff naturals and also to heritage who were a black owned it was like the one of the first black owned type hair shops in the uk in london so they stopped my shampoo brass brush my bonnets the spray bottles and I think the pillowcases too then Nuff Naturals in Tootin Broadway Market did also and then I landed Naturalistic Products which is an online retailer and from there it snowballed into European online retailers so everything was going amazing and this is before 2020. 2020 hits and there is no way that we can send or receive from outside of the UK like that was just to a halt, the prices to send over there went sky high. Brexit started, so sending to the EU is still now even a whole palaver that I just, I couldn't afford to do. And it caused me problems. And now, you know, I haven't got those retail connections in Europe, which is really sad. So then let's fast forward to 2020. Um, the pillowcase, I actually managed to get it into quite a few like publications as well especially when the whole George Floyd thing happened a lot of black owned businesses were being promoted because people wanted to support black owned businesses black lives matter and stuff so that really helped to boost my business too like a lot of other small businesses black pound day shout out to swiss every single first saturday of the month he would do black pound day which encouraged people to buy only from black owned businesses and then you also had small business saturday so people would support and shout out a small business every single saturday so we had those initiatives and also a lot of instagram lives so people would invite you to come and speak on their lives so that really helped along with jammy jammy is like a network of black owned businesses you can connect and they will help to promote and push your business 2019 and 2020 black fridays i'll put the results here blown out of the water the most orders i've ever had the most income i ever had i had my first 10k month in 2020 and when i had that first 10k month guys you couldn't tell me anything i thought keyword thought that was it we was gonna go viral we were gonna just go to the moon but the problem that happened is I started to spend way too much money. I was investing in influencer marketing, paid ads I tested out and ended up spending way too much and not knowing what I was doing. So that money went down the drain. I took out the Shopify capital loan, put it towards all put it towards stock and not towards actually getting sales. So as you can see, like I just got a bit ahead of myself with my spending and ended up going downhill with the sales so 2021 came 2022 came and for small owned businesses small businesses sales were dipping for a lot of us just because with 2020 
and things opening now people were outside a lot more people weren't spending and buying online as much anymore so that really affected a lot of small businesses now during 2021 with the pillar case things started to get quite interesting because i started to get tagged in a lot a lot of posts of other businesses selling my pillowcase. My business was trademarked and stuff, but every time I got advice on my pillowcase, everyone told me you couldn't get it patented. The design wouldn't, you know, be available to be registered. And I didn't know in the beginning that you had to register your design within a certain time frame. So it had gone past that time frame for me to register my design. So I had no rights and no grounds to fight against these other businesses copying my products and it hurt guys it hurt so much to the point where anytime someone would tag me and shout out to those people who did tag me in the comments of that business and the other businesses because they were fighting for me they'd be like i was like curly did this first this business did this first you guys got it from them and like they would fight for me so i was grateful but at the same time it really hurt to the point where i'd rather not see it <laughs> Even friends of mine would be like, did you know that this person's stealing? And it would just be like, thank you for telling me, but there's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing you can do about it. So please just don't tell me at this point. I don't wanna know. So this one business actually managed to go viral with my product. And that, guys, my heart was broken. I literally cried anytime, anytime I saw this and put this on my own pillow, which is every single night. I felt a hole in my heart <laughs> because I just felt like I had failed myself. I feel like it's not fair that I didn't get that kind of recognition and that kind of virality with me and my business and my product. But then I had to get to the understanding that if this is God's plan, this is not my plan. I read again, Shoe Dog by the founder of Nike all of his trials and tribulations and all of the people that had stolen his design. I remember meeting with the founder of Tangle Teaser and him telling me about all of the counterfeits of his Tangle Teaser brush. And I thought, you know what? Okay, I'm just gonna accept that this isn't my journey and maybe I wasn't meant to go viral with the product at that point, but you know, my time will come. That actual business managed to pitch on one of the biggest business shows on earth and one with my pillowcase and other products that they made. So that was, as you can imagine, heartbreaking. So after that, anytime I would go on Google and type in like satin pillowcase, reversible satin pillowcase, boom. All of the big brands were now selling this pillowcase. I'm talking Sheen, Shein, however you say it. We're selling it for like a ridiculous amount of money, like less than five pound, I could have cried. I as a small business couldn't sell it at that price like come on that was really heartbreaking and I just thought okay this, this is heartbreaking but I knew the people that were selling it for those prices they had the worst fabric it was so cheap not great quality they didn't always have the same colorways that I did and I know their packaging would be quite basic as well so I just knew that I have to stand out against these other options and I know that the right people that are for me and for my brand and support the business and really care would buy into oh so curly i feel and look at it much differently please don't ever send any hate to any of those businesses i've had my time of feeling bitter about it and i don't feel bitter about it now i just know how to move moving forward with my newer designs and also guys they might have actually not known i want to the good part of me feels like maybe they really had never seen my products maybe they'd never even seen it i don't know I don't know I'll never know so yes with the pillowcase I decided I'm gonna rebrand relaunch and come up with better packaging better branding you know we're on TikTok now I want to share more of my story I really didn't really want to be the face of my brand for a long time guys I didn't want to tell my story but now I come to the realization after getting closer to God, growing my relationship with the Lord. And I have got confirmation that it is time to do that. And 
now I have that faith that it's going to work out. I really don't mind what I do <laughs> moving forward because I know it's going to work out. So that is the story of my invention, the reversible satin pillowcase. I hope you learned something from this. If you learn anything, I would say definitely make sure you invest into intellectual property. Make sure you find out what you should do before launching. And also I'd say to really document your journey as well, because that's something I wish I had done from the beginning. So for the future of the pillowcase, please stay tuned because I have an upgrade. I have new stuff coming up. So please stay tuned, subscribe, follow the journey, follow us on Instagram, on TikTok, along with me on Instagram and TikTok. All the links will be in the description box. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.